jump right in. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's say good morning to film critic and friend to our show, Dale Pollack. Dale, always great to see you on a Friday. Good morning, Dylan, Jackie, and Audrey. Great to be with you. Morning. Good morning. Well, welcome back, Dale. Tell us you went to the movie theaters and saw the bike riders. How was that? Well, I have a little bit of a personal stake in this movie because the writer director, Jeff Nichols, is a graduate of the UNCSA Film School and a oh. former student of mine. Oh, and cool. And I remember his, his student film very, very well. He does a great job with the bike riders up to a certain point. It's the story of a Midwestern motorcycle club in the 60s, pretty harmless, led by the great British actor Tom Hardy. And one of the bikers is Austin Butler, who played Elvis in the recent biopic. And it's kind of a meandering story. The biggest problem with this film is it doesn't have a plot. It's episodic. Characters come and go. Some change. But if you're looking for a real story, it isn't there. What you do get are great performances by Tom Hardy, by uh, Austin Butler, and by an actress in particular, Jodie Comer, who I wasn't familiar with. She was a star in, in Killing Eve, and she is terrific. And she anchors the film as a love interest for Austin Butler, and is told from her point of view, and she's the best thing in the movie. I wish I could give this four popcorns, but the absence of a real story that grips you just takes it down to three popcorns for me. Great performances, great looking, a great evocation of a specific era, but as a dramatic piece, doesn't quite meet where it wants to go. Dale, right. the fact that it says that it's inspired by true events in the trailer that we were airing makes it strange to me that it didn't have a plot. Yeah, right? they had to be centered around like a certain event. Well, it's based on a book of photographs. Oh. And when you have a book of photographs, there isn't a story other than mm -hmm. what the images tell you. Right. So I think that's where this film fell into a little bit of a pothole. Gotcha. Okay. And then it tries to get itself out, and it's, it's hard to do but the performances carry the film. Okay, huh. well that's that's a positive, yeah. but it, it seemed, yep. it would be tough for me to go to a movie and, and watch <laughs> if there's no plot, you know? Yeah, driving you to the end. It's but I weird. feel like your student yeah. probably having you before is gonna accept this, this you know, criticism <laughs> yeah. and be like, yeah, this sounds about right. Three from popcorns my from Dale, popcorn. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at either. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, also in theaters, A Quiet Place, day one. So I've seen the first one. What is this one about? This is the prequel. The first one came out in 2018. There was the sequel in 2020. And now this is the prequel, which is how the aliens came to Earth and what they did before the events of the first film start. Um, Lupita Nyong'o stars in this. And let me tell you, she can act. What she does with her face and her eyes in this film is astonishing. And so for the first hour of this hour and 40 minute film, it is outstanding. It's one of the best suspense films I've seen this year. You are on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. And then she encounters, out of all places, a British guy played by Joseph Quinn, who doesn't seem to know why he's in the movie or what his part is in the plot. And the film begins to go out of control. Oh. And so for the last 40 minutes, I'm just going Boy, did they ruin a terrific setup. Oh. And it's disappointing because the other two films ended strongly. And this one does not. And I don't know where they go with the series after this. I think it's probably played out. Uh, there is the young writer-director, Michael Sarnowski. Uh, and he did a good job in terms of evoking the suspense and terror for the first half of the film. But he clearly did not really know what tone he wanted to end it on. And so the film just sort of peters out. And that's not what you want from this kind of a setup. Mm, no. Man. I did not see that coming. So, no. Did I. We had high hopes with the start of yeah. your yeah. insight there on that. <laughs> yeah. So three popcorns again for a great two thirds of a movie. Unfortunately, the last third just doesn't click. Ah, oh, that's a shame. So close, near miss. Huh? I feel like yeah. if you want a movie to click, it's the mm -hmm. second two-thirds, yeah. not necessarily the first two-thirds, and then let you it down. Is. 
It's what you walk away with that really right, counts. Yep. Right. Good point, Dale. And okay. He's teaching us some things today. He is, yeah. <laughs> we'll remember that. All right, third one, Dale. Let's talk about trigger warning on Netflix. All right. Well, we're going down the elevator to the basement here. Oh, no. Because oh, this, is one of the, this is one of the worst films I've seen this year. Oh, no. Um, Jessica Alba, who made her reputation in action films and is a decent actress. She's never going to win the Academy Award. But this is a vehicle that really goes nowhere. She, I think, is trying to figure out the mysterious death of her father. She has some kind of a, a background in intelligence and in special forces. The whole film is murky and unclear, and the plot doesn't carry it. So you're, you're, living, you're left with Jessica Alba, not the strongest actress in the world. She has to try to carry the entire film, and it lands with a thud. It just doesn't work at all, in my estimation. The most interesting thing for me was the appearance of Anthony Michael Hall, so famous from The Breakfast Club and The John Hughes. He now looks like he's 70 years old, about 6'2", and it's hard to believe it's the same actor who was young Anthony Michael Hall. If that's the best insight I got out of this film, that says something <laughs> about how has so little to offer I really urge you, save your time. Mm. Do not waste it watching Trigger Warning, wow. which I'm giving one popcorn. I'm scared oh. to ask, yeah. And I'm oh. being generous. Oh, wow. Oh, maybe we should add a zero That's popcorn. what we should do. Yeah. We should just do an empty theater. I thought kernel. about it. <laughs> a kernel. Yeah, we a should kernel. do a kernel. I like that. <laughs> oh, my. This I film know. would merit it. <laughs> this film oh, would merit it. That's bad. Yeah. Well, Jessica that's Alba, I so, forgot she was an action actress i kind of I'm forgot what her yeah. specialty was yeah yeah but this this just leaves her gasping yeah mm. not it's, this specialty oh. apparently lacking. Time. okay <laughs> dale thank you so much for this roundup have a great rest of your weekend and for you at home here are those titles one more time that dale reviewed for us the bike riders in theaters a quiet place day one also in theaters and then lastly trigger warning on netflix and if you enjoyed Dale's recommendations of what to and what not to watch, you can mm -hmm. find them in two ways. You can check out the WXAI YouTube playlist titles, Movies in Review, and then also head to DaleMPollock.com.